We're back at the table with this week's line opinion panelists to talk about policies President Trump outlined in his speech to Congress this week and how they might affect New Mexicans. The president talked about increased federal spending, which could be a good thing, as New Mexico is the recipient of more federal dollars, as you know, than any other state in this nation. He especially wants to boost defense spending. And Tom, defense spending, that might have pricked up a lot of ears around New Mexico by saying not just a little bit, but by a significant amount of money. Now, we'll get to the other hand stuff of where he's going to find this money and how that affects New Mexicans. Let's start with defense spending. Good thing for us? Uh, yeah, I think there's a, a potential upside for okay. defense spending. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, the number of military bases here, the right. national labs, uh, you know, the tension that uh, is being created around the world, you know, you would, you would think that New Mexico would fare well. Uh, you know, the, but the real benefit there uh, is in the form of dollars. Right. And what's the trickle down going to be to the local economies? Uh, you know, so if uh, if a lot of money is allocated to you know Sandia or Los Alamos, mm -hmm. uh, and then that money is contracted out of state, right. we don't see a lot of that trickle Good down. Point. Uh, but the fact that we have the labs and the Air Force bases here, I think, uh, is is really strong. Mm -hmm. Steven Spitz, um, he's announced a bunch of dope, but I didn't really hear a plan. I didn't really hear a defense plan. Do That's you know so I mean? unusual for right, me. right. <laughs> and so I say that to say, how can we get comfortable here in New Mexico with our part of the plan if there is no plan quite yet? Do you see so, what I mean? So here's yeah. my take, which is perhaps a little bit different. But you know, yeah. President Obama announced a one trillion dollar uh, uptake in nuclear weaponry. One trillion. So right. fifty-four billion, which is the number. Mr. Trump, mm -hmm. talk, President Trump talked about, mm -hmm. is almost rounding her. So you're talking about, mm -hmm. I think, 12 more nuclear submarines. You're talking about a stealth bomber. Mm -hmm. You're talking about ICBMs. Mm -hmm. You're talking about MIRV missiles. It's, it's a huge program, right. all nuclear-centered. Right. So, you know, New Mexico is going to do fine. You know, all we had to make sure of was that he wasn't going to lower it. As long as it's, it's, we're still doing that, we're going to do mm -hmm. great. We also have Heather Wilson, uh, who right. uh, lobbied, uh, arguably unlawfully, right. for the labs. Mm -hmm. So she knows the labs. I think the labs are going to do fine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the thing I would raise, and I know New Mexicans hate to hear this, is do we really need to do this? And we already spend more than the next seven countries. There's no country that's close to us in modern weaponry or readiness right. in terms of nuclear. So, you know, no rational actor is ever going to attack us. And as far as irrational actors, you know, there's nothing we can do with irrationality. Right. So, right. you know, I, I really sort of question all of this. It's strange to me, by the way, that mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton never brought this up. You never heard anything about this in the Democratic campaign. And, and, yeah. and yet she was attacked for, you know, not being strong in the military. Well, she was going to continue that policy. That's right. Isn't that something? Laura, the idea that, you know, $54 billion, I understand that, you know, it's not a whole ton of money, but in the situation we're in now, that money has to come from somewhere. And New Mexicans could be potentially hurt if certain things are cut from other places. So it's a bit of a trade, isn't it, for us here? There is. Yeah. And, and I think that represents about a 10% increase in the budget overall. Right. And I don't think it's anything new that we see. <clears throat> um, I think traditionally we've seen an increase of defense spending under Republican administrations versus Democrat administrations. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there's been examples um, like Obama and, and others where, where it's, it has been cut, defense has not been cut. So in that sense, New Mexico has fared okay under those administrations. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the worries, certainly to me, and I think a lot of the Democrats um, on the Hill, is that uh, you know, what, what, is gonna, what are we gonna cut to be able to fund that? Um, and in New Mexico, we have, you know, while we do depend a lot on federal um, funding, federal monies, because of the labs and the bases, we also depend quite a lot because of the population that we have, Social Security, Medicaid, food right. stamps, you know, a lot of those kinds of programs that are entitlement programs that uh, may be on the chopping block uh, for this administration. So I think that worries a lot of people. Interesting. We have a, as Rachel says, we have a Tea Partier, a self-designated Tea Partier, who is doing these budget decisions, and that budget the president is proposing is very slashy when it comes to those kind of things mm -hmm. that Laura just mentioned. What's the upshot for here in, in New Mexico? Yeah, absolutely. Laura yeah. raises a great point. Um, Including federal grants, by the way. I should throw that in, too. What if we don't have federal matching grants for lots of these things that Laura brought up? Absolutely. Know? That's right. a big question. Uh, at Business First, we just did a forum on the nonprofit world and how it's changing. And that is a big worry for our nonprofit community in New Mexico right now. What's going to happen with federal grant funding? Right. It is such a big source of funding for programs to serve the 
large population of people in need here. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of concerns that that's going to be drawn down and how will those populations get the services they need. Right, exactly. This is where the, the grind of Congress comes into play, isn't it? It's going to be very interesting. Another issue that came up, Rachel Sams, uh, was immigration, certainly. We had a, an interesting little, little weirdness uh, the day of the speech with the administration released. Uh, the idea that they could be open to a different kind of immigration thing, but it was sort of a, a, a MacGuffin. It really wasn't exactly what they were looking for here. But the upshot for New Mexico, the wall has come back into play. Mm -hmm. There's a big lusty standing applause for that. What, on immigration, where do we stand for, to lose or win with, or in New Mexico with Mr. Trump? Well, there are, there are a lot of things in play with that. Um, but one thing that I hear uh, people concerned about is the uh, relationship of trade between uh, New Mexico and between Mexico and what all of these issues going on at the federal level mm -hmm. are going to mean with that. Um, the state's exports to Mexico aren't huge, but they had been growing from, say, 2012 to 2015. Right. And that's a potential source of income for our state. It's one that a lot of people are concerned about. And as I read in your paper and others, um, when that word tariffs was mm -hmm. thrown down, uh, that <laughs> for New Mexican business people, that's not exactly, you know, a, a welcomed word. It made a lot of people very nervous. I could imagine. Steve, your thought on this, on the immigration uh, part. Where does New Mexico come out on Mr. Trump's ideas? Well, I, I mean, I was incredibly disappointed by what he, he did tease, as you said. He teased comprehensive immigration reform. Right. to some anchors, and that's so people right. thought maybe that's part of the speech. Instead, I, I, I mean, I thought it was a hate-filled speech. I mean, he, 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 had, he used his props, people that had been harmed uh, by uh, unlawful immigrants. Mm -hmm. He's creating an office to publicize any crimes by unlawful immigrants. I mean, it's, it's, it's all very negative for immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, if he's going to he's going to get what he wants on the visa program, you know, more skilled people. He's got to get Democrats. And if he's going to get Democrats, he's got to ha have comprehensive immigration That's reform. Right. But the problem is, I think, this is going to come after almost everything else. I mean, first comes the repeal of Obamacare. Right. Then, we, uh, then we got infrastructure. Then we got the border tax. That's right. Then we got uh, general taxes. And then maybe immigration reform and that will split the Republican Party so mm -hmm. that's going to be tough so you know I, I, I'm sorry to say I'm not hopeful and I'm my actually my heart goes out to parents who have to worry yeah. you know that they could be grabbed and their children are going to be left without parents without anyone New Mexico could be a hot spot a hot spot flash spot for this oh kind of it's thing, terrible for sure. I, I, I yeah. re, it really is awful thank you all for this week good stuff